in preparing for this talk, I learned there's over 10,000 articles on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, and almost all of them are done in Europe and Japan. Um, so a, blood, a person's blood pressure can vary uh, over the course of a day under the influence of uh, the adrenergic output from the autonomic nervous system, physical activity, uh, hormonal levels, and what we put in our body, including salt, alcohol, nicotine, and caffeine. <clears throat> it can also vary with sleep and, and, and uh, awake time. So um, let's see, where's my, is this the clicker for this, I guess? So um, white coat hypertension has been around for several years and been described, and um, it has led us to look at ways to profile blood pressure over 24 hours versus taking a snapshot like this. And home blood pressure monitoring has been shown to be superior to office blood pressure monitoring for the diagnosis and treatment of hypertension. And uh, as uh, we'll talk about, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is even the most superior. <clears throat> so this is a picture of some of the monitors uh, that are used. Uh, typically, a patient has a blood pressure cuff placed. Uh, they have a device that inflates this cuff every 30 to 60 minutes over a 24-hour period. Um, it's, it is recorded with a little device you wear on your belt or in your pocket, and it's downloaded into software, and then you get a... Uh, a printout like this, so you can get the uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressures over 24 hours. And most importantly, you can get an average 24-hour blood pressure, an average daytime systolic and diastolic blood pressure, and an average nighttime or sleep time systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So normal uh, mean waking blood pressure in a meta-analysis of normal intensive patients uh, is 123 over 78. Uh, mean of sleep time blood pressure is 118 over 72. And uh, one of the parameters that can be measured by ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is systolic and diastolic load, which is the percentage of blood pressure readings greater than 140 over 90 while awake and 120 over 80 while asleep. And it's been shown to correlate with uh, the development of adverse cardiovascular effects. Um, the threshold for diagnosis based on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, a 24-hour average would be greater than 130 over 80, a wake average greater than 135 over 85, and a sleep blood pressure greater than 120 over 70. So data that can be obtained from a 24-hour blood pressure uh, monitoring device would be 24-hour average blood pressure, blood pressure readings while awake, blood pressure readings while asleep, which is very important, uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure load, dipping status, which we'll talk about. And uh, uh, you can have dipping status, no dipper status, and reverse dipper status. So current practice guidelines and expert panel recommendations are the following, suspected white coat hypertension. And white coat uh, syndrome is the only thing reimbursed by Medicare at this time, which, which I didn't know until I prepared for this talk. Commercial reimbursement is variable. <clears throat> So to evaluate for resistant hypertension, sleep time blood pressure, masked hypertension, efficacy of hypertension control, episodic hypertension, such as may be seen in pheochromocytoma, evaluate symptoms of hypotension in patients taking antihypertensive medications, or to evaluate symptoms of possible hypotension in patients that aren't taking blood pressure medications, such as may be seen in autonomic dysfunction. So this is a, the... the criteria, if you uh, put this on a patient and you want Medicare to pay for it, you have to have greater than 140 over 90 on three separate office visits, but two separate measurements made on each visit. You guys all know I love documentation, so you have to document this. And at least two documented blood pressure readings outside the office, less than 140 over 90, and no evidence of target organ damage, which is really important. So they reimburse $120. So you get $80 for uh, technical fee and $40 for the physician. <clears throat> so uh, mask hypertension is seen in 5 to 10% of individuals. We've all seen patients come to our office and they have LVH or they have some chronic kidney disease and they have no apparent reason for it. And they have found that if you put a 24-hour uh, blood pressure monitor that uh, 5 to 10% of these patients actually have undiagnosed hypertension. So the United States Preventative Task Force, which I learned about, is a 16-member multi-specialty group of physicians uh, appointed by the government about 30 years ago. Their whole purpose in life is prevention, recommending preventative uh, uh, 
uh, evaluations, and they have recommended, they, they just, in the Annals of Internal Medicine just a year ago, recommended ambulatory blood pressure monitoring should be used to confirm an office diagnosis of hypertension. So this was uh, a pilot study done in 1997, uh, the Ohasama study, uh, done in uh, n rural Japan, and they looked at 1,542 subjects, uh, greater than 40 years old, followed by for 8.1 years. These were untreated patients. And they looked at the prognostic significance of blood pressure for cardiovascular mortality examined by this Koch proportional hazard regression model, which is a very powerful statistical model where you can eliminate every variable except what you're looking at, and showed that ambulatory blood pressure monitoring had a stronger predictive power for cardiovascular mortality than the screening blood pressure. Ten years later, uh, this, uh, this is a misprint. This shouldn't be a meta-analysis. This is actually a prospective study of 7,030 patients, and they were recruited from Europe and Japan, uh, reported by Hansen in the Journal of Hypertension in 2007. And again, these are untreated patients followed for 9.5 uh, years, and they found that average systolic blood pressure levels were superior to conventional blood pressure readings in predicting adverse cardiovascular and cerebral vascular events. <clears throat> So this is uh, a study uh, by Verdecchia in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology in 2002. And these, these were treated patients, 790 patients, uh, mean age 48, followed for 3.7 years. And they found that not only was 24-hour uh, uh, <clears throat> average, average blood pressure control more predictive of adverse cardiac events if you treated patients with adequate 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure control, you reduced... Uh, the impact of cardiovascular events by less than a half. <clears throat> so sleep blood pressure is very important. Um, sleep uh, at night, our blood pressure normally decreases by 10% or a little more in normal, normal tensive patients. Uh, Non-dippers uh, do not decrease at night, and they have an increased risk of cardiovascular mortality and morbidity. Um, and there's rarely reverse dippers, which actually go up at night. So average sleep blood pressure is uh, uh, average, an uh, abnormal average sleep blood pressure would be greater than 125 over 75. And the normal mean sleep time blood pressure in normal intensity patients is 118 over 72. So sleep time blood pressure has been found to be more predictive for the development of target organ damage, progression of chronic kidney disease, and more predictive of all cause mortality in these studies. And I'll mention the last in Hernanda in the uh, uh, Journal of the American College of Cardiology just in September of 2011 reported on 3,300 patients. And what they did is they randomized these patients to receive uh, blood pressure medicine at night to normalize their average nighttime blood pressure. And they found for every five millimeters that they reduced the average nighttime blood pressure, they had a 17% reduction in, in uh, uh, fatal and non-fatal fatal cardiovascular events. So they found that it was, uh, first off, a powerful predictor of cardiovascular events, also a powerful predictor of, of uh, not having a cardiovascular event if you're treated. So this is a study from Spain in 2007. It was uh, reported in this kind of lesser known journal because it was a uh, open label, uh, one center study. But they again looked at the uh, effect of treating blood pressure on the effects of chronotherapy, which is treatment in response to circadian rhythm. And uh, they looked at over 2,000 patients with hypertension. Again, they normalized uh, the average or mean nighttime blood pressure, and they demonstrated uh, uh, a reduction in primary endpoint all cause mortality and adverse cardiovascular events by less than half. They also found an uh, incidence of non-dipping of 62% in their hypertension patients, and they were able to reverse this to 34% by treating their patients at bedtime. So in a meta-analysis of four prospective studies uh, reported in 2007 in hypertension uh, in Europe, nighttime blood pressure was a better predictor of outcome for all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, coronary heart disease, and stroke whether the patients were treated, not treated, male or female. So the National Institute for Care, Instance, Care Excellence has done a comprehensive cost analysis of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and recommended it to the United Kingdom National Health Service. And in fact, if a patient presents there with stage one hypertension without target organ damage, all of them get a 24-hour ambulatory uh, blood pressure monitor for diagnosis. 
and in Japan, in this journal listed at the bottom, uh, they found, they reported a 10-year decrease in cost by 9.48 trillion yen by using ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. So the downside of this is cost of equipment and personnel, variable reimbursement, uh, complications could be petechial rash, ecchymosis, very rarely thrombophlebitis, hematoma, and compressive neuropathy, more commonly general discomfort. Uh, nobody likes having a blood pressure blowing up every hour while they're trying to sleep, and uh, for that reason, there can be noncompliance. So conclusion, data unique to 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring are mean day and nighttime blood pressure, Circadian rhythm variations, or you can establish dipper or non-dipper status. Uh, useful to assess for white coat hypertension, mass hypertension, resistant hypertension. Useful to avoid overtreatment, and studies suggest it's cost effective. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.